And I actually think we are now live online in the world, to the world. Yes. Hi, everyone. This is uh, Donny on LinkedIn and YouTube, <laughs> live online with Innovation Fika, my Wednesday afternoon coffee break show where I get to spend 30 minutes having coffee. Well, not coffee, actually, the coffee today, but we'll have coffee afterwards. Coffee afterwards, yes. yes. Uh, with interesting people talking about interesting things. And you can find all of the recordings of this show on YouTube the Innovation Fika channel, which after today will have 122 episodes. I know, it's kind of, how did, how did how that have happen? How have you done this? How it's like, how did my kid be, be 15 years old? How did I get 122 episodes? It's, it's amazing. And then all of my written content is also on Medium. So you can check out my Medium page, Donny S. Siligones. So that's uh, about it. And, and everybody coming online, as usual, add in the comments uh, who you are, where you're from, and make sure to get the comments going and the questions going as well for, for Poonam. I'm just gonna do a quick check on uh, what it looks like here in our settings thing here, audio. Uh, we have audio, yes, we have audio, so very good. So without further Perfect. ado, I will actually introduce today's guest. Yes. Visiting Stockholm for Stockholm Impact Week, right? Yes, correct. Second Cor time around. Second time around. Feeling more Swedish and more Swedish. Okay. Next time she'll come, third time's a charm, which is next year, she'll speak Swedish as well. That's perfect. <laughs> Excellent. So good, so good. Anyway, I will start by just saying, Poonam, welcome to the show, welcome to the studio. And I know you've been on the show before, but for everybody who haven't, hasn't met you yet, I will start by asking you the same question. I ask all of my guests, who are you and what do you do? I love this question. The last time he asked me this, it took it took some time. I am a citizen of the world. I uh, grew up in Malaysia, grew up in Canada, lived in Europe for six uh, years. So I've lived all around the world uh, in that sense. And uh, one thing that's binded my entire career from hospitality to banking to impact investing to founding and digital transformation strategy at public and private roles is that uh, impact is best driven by honesty and best driven by a clear line of sight. Mm -hmm. And so everything I do, I try to scorecard, I try to make simple, palatable, you know, a book for dummies, that mm -hmm. kind of that kind of uh, approach. Because I, so I, even I can I, understand <laughs> what she's trying to do. No, you, you are a very you are a very advanced educator. So you've got this part uh, pinned down, I yeah. think, you know, and palatability is everything. Cool. Uh, at the end of the day. Okay, well, I'll jump straight into that and yeah. start asking you some questions because yes. you're talking about we this the, the title of the show today was uh, deep dive into ESG. Yes. And then we're talking about impact investing. Yes. Should we just do some slight definitions of layman definitions? What we talk about when we say impact investing? What do we talk about when we say ESG? Because as I was talking to you before, before this show, I did actually a search on LinkedIn for let's see if I can find anybody that sort of has something with ESG in their title. Yes, yes. And it was. Yes. And so, as I understand, many of you are watching as well. So, you know, welcome ESG experts. Uh, there's probably many people here who know this subject very, very well. But the biggest the biggest misnomer is sustainable finance is sort of a general field, right? Yeah. Um, the UNFCC, which is a division uh, for finance, has, you know, rolled out, for example, uh, principles of uh, responsible investing. Mm -hmm. So when we talk about impact investing uh, back in the day of when Sequoia was, was starting this and, and defining impact investing, it was loose. Now, because we have uh, mm -hmm. SFDR disclosures, we have, uh, you know, uh, specific fund categorizations like Article 8 to Article mm -hmm. 9, um, there's also something called PAIs, which is principles of adverse impact. See, this is why I told you once we go, yeah, 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 it, yeah. it, it gets boring. When, 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 you, when, you see um, my, when you see my eye, my eyes are rolling backwards, you can sort of come back to where we were. That's okay. But, That's but okay. The, the, the main point of impact <laughs> is it must show on the books of the portfolio companies, yes. not just their books, but the books of their entire supply chain. Okay. Right? The entire supply chain as well. That's the goal of SFDR9, yeah. the goal. And I have to emphasize goal because that's a very difficult But that's nine. What, what was eight then? Eight is nearing that. And everyone uh, in this space uh, has a bit of a different uh, nuanced mm. uh, definition. Yeah. But there are certain PAIs which support this categorization of SFDR uh, funds, for mm. example, uh, which 
lack a little bit of, uh, you know, of improvement. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, PAI uh, 7 is about waste and it doesn't track hazardous waste. Okay. So there's some micro gaps that, you know, all of us have to kind mm -hmm. of define it. When ESG started, uh, there was a big take up on the ethos of it being, you know, something common for everyone to speak through. Mm -hmm. But then it fell off in COVID. Yeah. And then now it came back up again. And we've defined it now. And, and I think the biggest exciting thing that we have is that the world of uh, risk finance and chartered accountancy and auditing is, is coming together and starting mm -hmm. to actually define what that looks like. In, in accounting, you mentioned that the, you mentioned the UN. Yes. Yes, and because I know, I mean, the, the, what I know from the UN, and I mean, I know the, like the, uh, the uh, global compact, uh, yes. the principles of uh, ethical uh, business. Correct. Which is like how how do I run a business in a ethical way? Mm -hmm. That also turned into and parallel to the SDGs, which is like the goals we're aiming to fix kind of thing. Yes. So this is another sort of set of those, but for investing and finance. Because, exactly, pretty yeah. much the same. Okay. So SDGs informed this, but in the SDG space, we have the 17 SDGs, right? And we have ones that overlap each other. In ESGs, we have a similar issue. So in some countries, for example, in developing countries in ASEAN, for example, people are saying, you know, G has to be first and S has to be first. Well, well, let's, let's the, e, what is ESG? E's environment. Environment. S is social. Social. G is governance. Governance, okay. Some believe G should be ahead. Yeah. But if you think about it, it's just lettering. Yeah. It's just lettering. It's, it's about your business model, your customer's ethics, your ethics, you know, how do you want that relationship to impact your local market mm. and your, you know, your, your long-term legacy mm. is an identity. So some companies, a lot of companies in SaaS, for example, have, you know, maybe S more defined. So yeah. they have HR policies that are more defined, mm. but then they may be lacking in environmental policies, yeah. you know, and, and other ones which are hardware based, which I'm looking to invest in in the future, clean and climate, they are more environmentally driven. Mm. Their G you would think because they have hardware that they're ticking every regulatory box, but then they would only tick the regulatory boxes to scale. Yeah. And so they would be ignoring the social governance components. Yeah. So ESGs, you know, it allows for ownership, uh, autonomy, it, it, you know, yeah. uh, it allows for a lot more adaptiveness to the local market. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah. Well, let, let's, okay, let's, uh, I'll approach this from a, let's say I'm a startup or a company, a scale up, and I'm approaching this because I'm speaking to an investor and then we're mm -hmm. talking about some kind of impact investing and I want, I want my company to be in the impact investing kind of yeah. place, okay? Yes. So then, and then I'm really sort of breaking it down to, to taking it down to a very low level. That how do I incorporate sustainability into my business model? Mm -hmm. I mean, what does that actually mean for me in a company? Yes, yes. Because I can understand the whole idea of, and I like the idea of, you know, you look at, look at the full supply chain of where does the material come from that makes the things you sell, who makes them, uh, the Correct. people. That... Yesterday I met some of your champions here yeah. who are tracking this in circular fashion, who are, you know, who I'm interested I... in talking to. So. Exactly. So that's that's one thing. So, I mean, and that's kind of, I'm not saying, oh, yeah, I am saying that, feels intuitively like an easier thing to understand like yes. okay i'm selling a thing so i need to know where it came from and who's making it and that the materials and tie sort of track sustainability all the way down there but very often we do say to companies oh you need to integrate sdgs into your, or the sustainability mm -hmm. into your mm -hmm. business model mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and they go yeah but what does that mean mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. i think this is you know this is where there's an opportunity yeah. right so if you're a frontier technology your actually responsible to create those parameters very accurately. And this is why I designed the ESG backed 100 hour program that mm -hmm. is not pinned to, you know, a fixed amount of time or one week, four weeks sort of program. It's hours based. Mm -hmm. You can do it anywhere in the world. If you're a fast mover, you can accelerate through. If you have an auditor on the team or you have a finance person on the team, they will breeze through it as a co-founder. If you don't, we'll help you get through it, right? But the, the goal is if I do this 100 hour program, if I do materiality map, if I declare my scope one, two, and three emissions, I have my GHG roadmap, um, where do I go from there in shaping my ecosystem, mm -hmm. which is a frontier ecosystem? Mm -hmm. And so this is, this is where I strongly believe, me personally, the fund that I'm trying to set up must have a success rate that is higher than mm -hmm. most. I'm going for the 50-50 toss, so mm -hmm. 
let's hop. Um, and, uh, and, and it's about challenging systemic barriers, right? So yeah. you do the 100-hour program as founders, you then represent your frontier space, you then represent um, how you define the PAIs, you, you also have to communicate that massively. Um, and having the right partners around, mm -hmm. you know, that, uh, that process is really, really important mm -hmm. because if startups, especially those in the late seed and early growth, and this is the, the programs tuned for this, um, in clean and climate, with clean tech has a mm -hmm. longer front, frontier runway, so to speak, or longer space for funds to grow. The thing is, if you get ESG backed, uh, as the program name is, then you're looking at better support from larger funds. You're looking at better co-investment yeah. opportunities. Then you're, you're welcoming uh, valuation um, you know, minds who are more tuned towards where the yeah. future investments will come from. So this is why I'm interested in this space. I'll just say again to everybody watching, make sure to add who you are and where you're from in the comments and get some questions going because we have, we're live here because we want questions and interaction. Perfect. I'm and, having uh, a look at some of them. That's yeah, really cool. Uh, jumping in here as well um, with another question. Yes. When it comes to, and I, and I mean, I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to be a devil's advocate here, but. Just be yourself. We know you can't do any subversion. <laughs> Because when I we do I mean we do a lot of work with the with the SDGs here and with the sustainability it's kind of a DNA thing it's amazing. for us. Yesterday was a wonderful experience. If you ever get to come to KTH Innovation, you must come and you must come on the on the days where the alumnus is back through the incubator programs. The <laughs> culture when you talk about sustainability, it's a culture, right? And so most of the alumnus I've met from the incubation program here, I'd love to sign up right away for the ESG back program because of the mindset that they have. They're so open. They're not going to uh, drown in the letter soup and they're brave. Um, and I think that's an environment that KTH has really done an amazing job in cultivating. Thank you. Thank you. I haven't even asked She's not her to say me this. For this. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have to have a sign saying commercial break. No, no, but I thank you for that. But actually, as we stand now, of the 320 or so projects in our pipeline, because we take in 400 new projects per year. Yes. Uh, and so that means we have around 300 at any given time in our pipeline. But of the 320 or so projects in our pipeline today, 76% are actually reporting that they are trying to fix one or more of the development goals. Yes. 76% of all. That's, that's huge. That's huge. However, however, it's I often do the whole, you know, trying to work on the whole sort of STG washing or ESG washing mm -hmm. thing because mm -hmm. you can always sort of say yeah we're trying to fix that goal but it's like no you're not yes but mm -hmm. this is where your you know your uh, competitive your market comp competition is really important yeah. right so part of the program that we have is also mapping uh, your way of looking at ESGs against everybody else yeah. and you have to you have to compare that uh, yeah. and, and this is why it should be communicated a lot more mm -hmm. and I think the startup uh, community, the founder community, is the right community to inform mm -hmm. what is palatable and what isn't. Mm -hmm. uh, otherwise, we're going to end up in a situation where, let's say you, you have a proof of concept that you need uh, 8 million, 10 million, 20 million for. Um, you know that that is a milestone. You have 1 million now. Mm -hmm. um, you don't understand what kind of co-investments you should even entertain. Yeah. And, um, and that's a big problem mm -hmm. because all funds are ecosystems. Mm -hmm. And so they're all running around a little bit like headless chicken who's trying to make sense of our frontier technology. We're talking about investors now. Not really. I can't. I can't say that about anybody, uh, including myself. Sorry, no offense. No, no offense. No, no offense. But but when, I think educators, yep. uh, IP owners, investors, venture capital, whatever, angel, private yep. equity, family offices, everybody's running towards the frontier. Yeah. And and we're all having an emotional sort of. Um, desperation yeah. as we see you know loved ones on this side of the planet and that side of the planet having these issues and yeah. that issues and and there's a there's a general sense of urgency we can't we can't forget that right um, yeah I, so I, it, it's hard at the moment to dive in and say oh pi7 it really needs a lot of work uh, yeah. but but pi uh, 2 pi3 there's there's issues here there's issues there and mm. so there needs to be champions in each yeah. segment um, so our our program i'm really trying to focus clean climate six verticals of yeah. clean climate and eu and asean free yeah. trade you know agreement growth mm -hmm. so 
I'm trying to not only repair a little mm -hmm. bit of the sentiment from the bottom up perspective, mm -hmm. because again, valuations have gone completely awry, right? We've had massive haircuts. People don't understand. Mm -hmm. Nobody understands. And, and it's scary um, if, because this will deter founders. This will mm -hmm. deter frontier yeah. thinking. But that's, that's another thing because I, it, it, we can speak to founders and I speak to founders today and to companies and I say that the interesting thing with sustainability as again, talking about this kind of vague thing of in, you know, integrating sustainability into your business model, which can be harder or, or easier to, to grasp. Uh, but it is not only a business necessity, yes. good regulation, but it's also a business advantage. As massively, uh, massive. massively. Yeah, so, so, but turning it around to the investors, yes. Then, uh, how, what, what do you see, sort of, in? Because I mean, I, I hear a lot of people saying, "Yeah, well, we're moving towards impact investing, and we're only going to look at you know that kind of thing." However, a lot of money in the world is not being impact invested. No. Yes. You said it. So there, there we go. We've, we've jumped into the into the fracking conversation now. <laughs> no, but, but seriously, I mean, it, it's, it's I'm a, just teasing. No, but tease away. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah uh, true, true, true. Um, I think the word impact is in innovation as well yeah. is, has been misused immensely, right? Because impact is quantifiable, non-quantifiable. How much of your impact uh, is measurable and, and not measurable? And if it's even not quantifiable metrics, how are you still measuring mm -hmm. change? There is always actually a way to measure change. I, I would say even yesterday coming by, meeting you know, a good amount of alumnus, returnees from the incubation program, um, seeing that maybe some of their ideas didn't quite fit or they didn't have the perfect clear line of sight, but they're here. Yeah. Um, the rate of return in that case, oh, yeah. you know, um, and their advocacy for the health and the community, that would be measurable. Yeah. So, so there's always a note way. to self KPI. <laughs> <laughs> so there's always a way to 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 find you know yeah. some aspect of measurability. But we are yeah. we we are. I, mean, I must say that on that note, we are equally proud of the people who come into our process, try something and fail for good reasons. Yes. And then come and then I mean then they they come back to the events, but they phone us you know, six months, two years later saying, look what I've started now and it actually works. Exactly. And you know, they've learned something exactly. and we've empowered them and we've given them the tools to know and, and dare exactly. to go out and, and try something, which is I, for us is a very, very big thing. And, and in a way that is, of course, impact as, yes. as well. Yes. But coming back to the investor part of things, mm -hmm. uh, do you feel that because a lot of when you look at it, it's not the you know it's not the hockey stick return of investment as you might get in sort of any kind of financial instrument that you put money in and then you expect a maximum you know money back 10x money in three years kind of thing no matter what they do um it's like a friend of mine who when the pandemic hit he he's a very shrewd business person he's like he knows what's gonna happen and what's going on mm -hmm. and he made a killing in in the stock market mm -hmm. when the pandemic hit mm -hmm. because he looked at the pandemic and he looked at the USA mm -hmm. and said, I'm going to buy stocks in Smith and Wesson. People yes. make guns. Yes. 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 And of course yes. that went through the roof. The yeah. first two, two first year, they bought more guns in America than they bought the last 10 years. Mm -hmm. But that's, I mean, that's just money return, mm -hmm. not looking at what you're actually doing with the money. Yes. Are we getting to a point where people are trying to sort of evaluate and value other returns on investments than fast monetary paybacks? Oh yeah, oh, yeah. I mean, we're definitely shifting away, especially when there is hardware uh, involved. Yeah. Uh, when there's hardware involved, when it's clean, not just climate, uh, when it's not just enterprise level adoption, and you're looking at consumer benefits, you're looking at public gain. Uh, it is a longer term investment. I mean, if you look at public debt infrastructures or public grant infrastructures, you know, it's a longer conversation. And I think uh, a lot of the clean climate companies, they are highly seeded, especially here in Sweden. They're already highly proofed and, you know, highly proven uh, by grant monies. And so I see a lot of increase. I mean, ticket mm -hmm. sizes for free money, uh, even KFW Capital is giving out, you know, double, triple of what they used to. So there's always, you know, somewhere that will sort of, uh, readjust the, mm -hmm. the scale, you know, um, and 
I would stay away from, you know, speak of uh, there's no mo no money, it's hard to raise, uh, you know, any, any sort of no's at the moment. I'm, I'm not a toxic positivity type of person, but at the same time, I believe that there is always a of different course. approach in a different market. And so if you stay malleable, if you stay open, if you can change your supply chain or you can change a little part of it that is, you know, a yeah. little bit high risk, you're, you're going to be in a better position. Yeah. So the important thing is getting into these acronyms mapping it out for yourself mm -hmm. you know the global reporting index offers a very solid framework uh, people were hanging on to that for very long mm -hmm. now uh, ifrs as a counting body has taken over with their with their standards and so just don't get intimidated and you know just attempt to actually measure the the uh, relevant PAIs mm -hmm. to your own business. I mean, there's always and there's always something to be done. I know that uh, when we do like the super early stage yes. SDG mapping, and we have the projects just mapping out, you know, what do we see? Are we sort of directly or indirectly positive and negative to which goals and what? Just just get an idea, and then when they sort of add what they're what they think guesstimates, mm -hmm. assumptions of supply chain and where is it going to come from and where is it going to go, and then trying to figure out, okay, well this might not be good and this might be better sort of so i mean there's always there's always a good idea to just take a step back and look yes. at look at the picture and say yes. where am i now what are we trying to do how will that affect different things by the way a, a tip there's a, a really cool canvas uh out there for sustainability for digital tools called the ethical digital canvas which wow. actually helps you it helps you map out your digital consumer service be it an app or whatever yes to see Will this be harming the user in any way, yes, as yes, in yes. addiction to you know getting online and oh, stuff wow. like that? It's it's okay. a really cool digital ethical canvas to to understand what um, mm -hmm. what what are the possible consequences of my digital service that mm -hmm. I'm sort of unleashing onto the world. Mm -hmm. It's like a, a, a fr another friend of mine, mm -hmm. uh, Neil Real. He he wrote the book Hooked about how to get people hooked on digital services. It was Silicon Valley like. 10, 15 years I've ago. I've seen that. Very cool. And that book was so successful that he had to write a book about how to get people unhooked from <laughs> digital service because he realized that he'd created this Frankenstein monster of how to get people stuck on an app, you know, the scroll and all of the other things that get people sort of, you know. Uh, it's amazing so, what you become responsible yeah, so, for. Yeah, but taking responsibility for what you actually create <laughs> exactly. is, a, is a big thing. Exactly. exactly. And I think that that's, that's something that the founders need to sort of build into their business models and also their business from start, sort of taking responsibility for what you are sort of unleashing onto the world. Correct. I and this is my personal opinion. I don't like the like um, I, I, very many of the so-called platform economy companies that have this uh, a huge drove of of gig workers. Mm -hmm. Nothing wrong with that idea per se, but mm -hmm. the way they do it, where they don't res take responsibility for the mm -hmm environmental situation of the actual workers that are doing all of the work and have to compete to get their gigs in and they go well that's not ours you know we're just a platform and that's which is a little crock because it's your company and it, you've made it so fix it okay you cannot just say oh it's not our responsibility it is your responsibility so sorry for going on on that but that's yeah it's hard. I mean, you know, a lot of these companies, you know, everyone's looking to obviously shave a little here, shave a little where, there. Yeah. Uh, and, and you can see that happening with, you know, immense automation. Uh, but at the end of the day, if if we're not modeling our solutions and our work environment, our work life balance, according to human limits and human day to day, uh, you know, design, uh, that, that that's on you as a founder, for sure. Yeah. yeah you have and to then, of course, the because we're talking about investments here. And then, the, I mean, you're setting up a fund 2020. 24 next year? Yes. 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 And but how much then? Not how much. No, it's not a competition. But <laughs> of course, it is up to the investor as well because the money will decide what gets funded. Yes, absolutely. But I'm, you know, I'm looking. So when they go through the program, you know, for example, with this work life balance component under G and S, yeah. I'm looking for obviously how they would tie in an environmental aspect. So if they were to get a provider for, ergonomic chairs or a provider for uh, air or air purifier yeah. uh, any of these other elements that would increase you know uh, health and balance and focus and wellness of the employee i'm looking at that that smarts i'm trying to find mm -hmm. you know companies that founders who who can see that this is not a uh, limited categoric way of looking at it of you know e cannot be s and s cannot be g or if we did it in this category we cannot do it in that category because for that matter 
that's very limited thinking. That that's not very uh, holistic thinking as a founder. You're, you're probably not going to steer your company uh, into that growth trajectory that we need. And most of the companies we are looking at are frontier technologies. Yeah. So clean and climate frontier technology advocates are you know few and far between. You mm-hmm. have a lot of climate uh, folks, but not clean and climate. Mm-hmm. And so they have to be, you know, relatively clever in balancing. And ESGs are not the only solution. There's also the task force on climate disclosures, you know. Yep. So my urge to, to founders is think about what you can affect, you know, always consider the donut economics way of looking at things, the planetary limits, which TFCD does mm-hmm. quite a bit better because it focuses around biodiversity. And if you think about it, every business is a ecosystem, mm-hmm. a biodiversity dependent, somewhat dependent food chain. Yeah. Um, with venture capital and the mindset behind it, sometimes, you know, in, in different private equity, a lot of investors, they sort of ask, de-risk quick. I wonder sometimes when we push founders to, to uh, give options. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay, so you have a dependency here, show us other options. Uh, I wonder whether founders are sometimes just trying to find that bifurcation, trying to find that option two, three, Mm -hmm. but then they get fatigued as well and don't see the bigger picture. So they're offering sort of, you know, uh, you can take this road, you can take this road, Mm -hmm. but this is how we ended up with our road systems in most countries where we have roads and then we have side roads and they're not connected and they're chaos. And so, so we do have to be very careful in how we, you know, stimulate and push and uh, and i think you know but that's that's i, mean, I think that's i know we're sort of kind of getting at close at the end there but <laughs> I, but I, I the 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 talk about the ecosystem is so interesting because every idea uh lives thrives or fails in in a context of of the world yes. and i've seen it so many times where myself as well early stage founders have this great idea and you want i mean you want to do everything right Right, you want to you want to take all the boxes and, and everything, yeah. yeah, and everything has now. to be you know sustainable all the way, and then and then suddenly you start, oh, I have to compromise here, and that doesn't work, and I have to move this over here, and then if you're not careful, I'm saying, yeah, I'm saying if you're not careful, you sort of end up in the end after ten years going, wow, well, look, I'm the super successful, but I had to make all of these these uh, cutting corners and had to do this and. And then you have these excuses for why you had to do that because that's the way the world works and da da da, which is sometimes a compromise you have to make. However, I just think you have to do everything with very with going in with you know with a, with an open open eyes. Yes. And yeah. and every decision you make has to be based on an an actual choice. I'm making this decision, which is not what I actually wanted to, but I have to do this because. And then you have correct. Correct. And then try and go back and amend that as you get to a point. Because yes, I've, yes. I've seen businesses, like one, we had a helmet business. They were making bio, uh, helmets out of biodegradable plastic. Mm-hmm. And they, they sort of realized that they couldn't produce it locally. They had to produce it in China. Correct. And then and it was all the, the and, and, and there yes. went the whole, yes. that, that thing. So yes, I was like, yes, sort of, yes. oh. Yes. And I've had the same thing when I wanted to produce things locally and there was no production here. So I had to go to Eastern Europe and I said, well, I want to produce that. I want to produce it in Sweden. Exactly. But there's nothing here. Yes, yes. So it's, it's, this, this it's is why, tough. This is why, I'm, I mean, I, I would love to, you know, uh, have a, a bigger cross-continental conversation uh, between, you know, EU and I'm focusing on EU and ASEAN. The specific reason why is because I have reached there. Yeah. And I think this is where, you know, you have to accept your limits. You have to accept that you have this space in your existence and this is your donut economics and what are you mm-hmm. going to do about it? And, and don't uh, stress out that you're not, you know, able to change everything uh, all at once mm-hmm. right now everywhere. But I have good news Yes. for the planet. I have good news for the planet. Good news. Today. <laughs> Actually, no. Yesterday, Apple released their iPhone 15. Yes. And yes. I'm not promoting that in any way, but they have actually... <laughs> They've left the old charger cable and they've moved into USB-C, the standard. And and that's and people laugh at me when I when I do this. But this, you, you know, <laughs> tell you what, do you know how big a thing this is? Do you know how much electronic? Are you pitching for garbage? Apple no, right no, no, <laughs> Ele- no, 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 electronic garbage yes, in I Europe have. every year. Yes. Oh, only chargers and cables. Only chargers and cables. 11,000 tons yes. per year yes. is thrown away because we have different connections. 11,000 tons. Or the dog bit it. 
It's crazy. Yes. So, yes. But similar issues happening in space. Waste is, is still a component. I yeah. mean, in the world of um, impact or sustainability, everybody wants to say we are circular economy. We are only circular economy, but we're not circular economy in reality. In reality, we are producing waste in, oh, yeah. in gargantuan amounts. We've even and polluted more now than ever. <laughs> yes, we've even polluted space that we can't uh, we can't even go to the moon in a single shot without yeah. hitting debris. And there is no common ground on that. So yeah. I think what we need to work on is uh, Elizabeth from Berlin <laughs> saying that's a big deal. I love that. Thank Hi, you, Liz. Elizabeth. Thank you. Hi, <laughs> and Rod. I think this is actually a comment for uh, Poonam's. I think it was your pitch on KTH Innovation. It could have been that. I love that pitch. Thank yes, you. Thank, thank you. you. Oh, no. Thank you for pitching. No, that's a big. I came. Cool. I saw. I'm fixing. Thanks. Thanks. Right. It's actually one minute past three. This has been the Innovation <laughs> Beacon. My Innovation Coffee Break every Wednesday, two thirty p.m. in Swedish, in Swedish. No, Swedish time. <laughs> Half an hour. I can do it in Swedish as well. I will not with, be able to speak with Swedish guests like this. Just guests that actually teach us stuff that are way smarter than we will ever oh, be. No, 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 no. So no. I'm super happy. Thank you so much for spending time with me here today. Thank super you. happy. Welcome Thank back you. to Stockholm next Thank year you. when she'll be speaking Swedish as well. Ooh, Third time to chat. No pressure. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Have a wonderful day, and I'll see you all next week. Take care.